5.2, perfectly square. Apply the distributive property to ease expression. All right, x minus seven times x minus seven. I could use the box method for this. However, I'm just gonna do this in my head. x times x is x squared. x times negative seven x, negative seven x, I mean x times negative seven, negative seven x. Now I've got negative seven times x, that's negative seven x again. Negative seven times negative seven is positive 49. Simplified, we get x squared minus 14x plus 49. x minus 7 times x minus 7 is really just the same thing as x minus 7 squared. So here, again, I'm seeing this middle term is the sum of these two numbers, and the last term is the product of these two numbers, and we always get x squared at the front. So now I'm going to try to use that shortcut to save me some time. So I know I'm going to start off with x squared, 4 plus 4 is 8, so that's going to give me 8x, and 4 times 4 is 16. One of the biggest mistakes I see students make with this is they think this is equal to x squared plus 16. You completely forget about this middle term when you do that. You cannot just distribute exponents. Distribution works for multiplication, not for exponents, so please do not make that mistake. I cannot tell you how many times students make that mistake. I tell my algebra students, I will throw something out a window if I see you do that. So please, if you don't have a middle term here, you're doing something wrong. All right, x squared to start off, negative 10 plus negative 10 is negative 20x. Negative 10 times negative 10, that's plus 100. And again, if you're not seeing this, that's totally fine. That just means you need to make the box method, right, x minus 10 times x minus 10, and you'll get the same answer that I just got. I'm just seeing a shortcut, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. Now we've got x plus 1, so I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, so that's just some practice from last year, Algebra 1. Look at your results. Each of these expressions is called a perfect square trinomial. Why? Well, we squared a binomial to get that trinomial. The result is a binomial squared. You'll notice that um, this last term, the last term is always a perfect square. And we can actually make a formula for this. If I have x minus a squared, that is always going to result in x squared minus 2 times ax plus a squared. If I do x plus a quantity squared, I'm always going to end up with x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So that a part of the binomial is always very closely related to the last two terms. Obviously, you don't need to memorize this rule. You can always just use the box method. All right, number three. Which of these expressions are perfect square trinomials? If you get stuck, look for patterns in your earlier work. Well, first thing I notice is that for B, 20 is not a perfect square. 49, 16, 101, those are all perfect squares. I'm going to cross this one off the list right away. Now let's check to see if these are as well. Well, if I think about what could I square to get 9, that had to be 3. So I know that this probably resulted from x minus 3 squared. Why am I saying minus 3? Well, if I do minus 3 plus minus 3, that gets me to negative 6. So a works perfectly. And you can multiply this out if you don't believe me. All right, we multiply this out. We get x squared minus 3x. When we do the bottom distribution, we get negative 3x plus 9. And that simplified is x squared minus 6x plus 9. 
Again, this is very complex abstract stuff, so make sure that you understand it. Don't just blindly follow me. Always check to make sure that that is actually true. 81. Well, when I take the square root of 81, or 81 is a perfect square because 9 times 9 equals 81. Well, does 9 plus 9 equal 18? Yeah, it does. So this is also a perfect square. Let's take a look at 1. Well, I know that 1 times 1 equals 1, but 1 plus 1 does not equal negative 2. So I actually have to try something else. Besides 1 times 1 equaling 1, I can also do negative 1 times negative 1, and that will get me to 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 does equal negative 2, so D works as well. Let's see if this last one works. 4 times 4 equals 16. 4 plus 4 equals 4. It does not. So E is not a perfect square trinomial. Rewrite the perfect square trinomials you identified as squared binomials. Well, for A, we already identified that one. That'll just be x minus 3 squared. B, well, what did I multiply by itself to get 81 and add to itself to get 18? That would be 9. So x plus 9 squared. I'm sorry, that was for c. All right, this is all um, review from last year's algebra. So if, it, if it's, you know, it's very, it's very different from anything we've done this year. So don't be too hard on yourself if it's, it's taking you a while to get it. Um, that being said, if this is something that you're, you're, you're rusty on, you need to let me know. I can always provide more review for this stuff. Um, but really, this stuff was all gone over last year in your quadratics unit. All right, here, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So it's x minus 1 squared would get me for d. All right, and that's all for 5.2.